Roadrunner in the vice, that's what it is. Randall Hoover won, we're gonna tie the jig he wants to tie. One Roadrunner style pony head with the spinner on it. The spinner can be a pain in the butt on these, there's, there's absolutely no doubt. You get your thread wrapped up inside that little O-ring, it's over. You're gonna have to cut that, cut your thread and start again sometimes. Sometimes you can get it back out. What really, to me, is the pain in this is, I'm gonna zoom in on it is the tapered neck right here. If that came off perfectly flat, and you could, you could take a pair of side cutters and you could cut that and make it perfectly flat, give you a little better spot to tie up against. But being that it's got that little tapered neck, we're gonna have to use a little more Sally Hansen's right there to help, help get that to where it's not gonna go over the neck or it's not gonna be bulked up and it's gonna come undone. So let's tie this up and we are gonna start like I said, with the Sally Hansen's, it's gonna be kind of the ticket on making sure this, this style jig head comes out right. And the good thing about these, you can go to Walmart and you can buy these. You can go to Bass Pro and you can get them. Um, they usually come in a pack of three with some kind of plastic bodies that you can put on them or something like that. And everybody knows that that plastic body starts to slide off that head, starts to come undone. Um, there's a lot of ways you can super glue them on and stuff like that, or you can just take them home and tie them up yourself and ain't got to worry about that. Then we're going to start out wrapping right there behind the head. And I got this camera angle in a weird spot. I apologize for that. Um, I switched to an iPhone thinking the camera was going to be a lot better, but the forward facing camera, the focus on it is horrible. So it kind of forces you to use the rearward facing camera. I'm gonna scoot it over just a little bit. Adjust it. So we can't get it back in. There we go. Now let's get it situated back in the vise, get it tight again. And that hook, I took those hooks right out of the package and that thing's got just the slightest bit of a bend up. Let's do this too. Something else that helps tie one with the underspin. Let's clamp it in there at an angle to help keep that blade out of the way. Now we're in business. We're cooking now. We're going to wrap it right down to the point of the hook. Come back up. We're going to make this one a hackle. We're going to put some rooster hackle in it. Find out what I did with my scissors. Okay, let's cut that thread off. Let's tie in a black and chartreuse one to start out with, and then we'll probably add a black one over top of that, probably put a little bit of flash in it. And we're gonna use a really thin black Chanel. We're gonna lay our feathers right up against where that taper's at. another black hackle in. We'll put him right here on the side. There's a, you know, a lot of people that use these. You know, to me, it's, a, it's an older style crappie jig and you don't see very many people using it. I mean, you can cast this, retrieve it. You can vertical jig it. You know, that blade's gonna spin on the fall. Um, it's really an overlooked jig for crappie. And it's hard to believe it got that way, but it kind of is back in you know days seemed like everybody everybody had underspin and roadrunner had the market on it there's no doubt like more roadrunners um it's really it's really that kind of jig everybody should have in their box i mean you never know when that that spinner is going to be what triggers that bite that day Like I said, if you don't like that rubber they give you with them, bring them home and tie them up. Some of that flash back here. 
were only just a little bit shorter than my hackle feathers were. So we're gonna trim all that off. All right, now we're gonna put in this black Chanel. And I don't know the name of it, don't know the size of it. Been laying in my drawer for a long time. But since I don't have much to tie to here to butt up to, we're gonna use the thinnest Chanel we got and we're gonna start it back just a little bit. That zoomed in thing, it really makes my fingers show how bad and what kind of shape they're in. I apologize for my ugly fingers. I have used my hands all my life, so. All right, so we're gonna put that Sally Hansen's on and we're gonna brush this a little bit on the neck. And sometimes you'll notice that that Sally Hansen's will kind of dissolve some of that paint, but it's, it's not gonna hurt anything. It will dry back up. It might be a little discolored right there at the neck, but it should be fine after the whole jig dries up. So I'm not really gonna use the rubbery function on this because that blade's gonna be flopping and turning and that thread ends up getting caught in there. So if you're using a peak vise or any kind of vise that's got the rotary function, cut your Chanel off and just hand wrap it. I think you'll find it a lot easier than definitely gonna keep that thread out of that blade. Because Randall Hoover, you're right, that can turn into a pain in the butt sometimes. And I've gone up and underneath my thread a couple times on this just to make sure I'm getting a good wrap. Now what's going to be a little bit trickier on this is going to be your whip finish. All right, so we got that tied in there. We're going to cut that Chanel out. Push your bobbin back with your other fingers out of the way so you accidentally don't cut that thread. Cut it off right there and get your whip finish tool. And you're going to make some pretty good sized loops with the whip finish tool. Let's zoom back out so you can kind of see how I'm working that. We're gonna take that, we're gonna hook it, pull it back up over. You're gonna make a big triangle. Each one of these wraps are gonna be deliberate and slow. Work it around that O-ring, work it around the blade. Let's go ahead and put one knot in it there and let's do it one more time. And you can try to position that blade some different way out of your way that might help. You might even be able to maybe take a little piece of tape or something and you know, tape it to the front of the head so it's out of your way. Let's pop it out, pull good and tight. Let's cut it. And there you have it. That is how I tie a Roadrunner style crappie jig. Give it a shot. Not as hard as what you think it is. It's just. You've got to slow down and you've got to make each move deliberate. Make sure you've got good, you know, some type of glue right here at the neck to help hold that Chanel down. Get your thread real good. Get your thread good and wet. Make sure there's a good spot there that's going to get the glue on. And that is how I tie the Roadrunner. You can even see it right there. Like more Roadrunner. They make an excellent product. It's one of those things that's kind of overlooking now but you really probably ought to add it to your box. It never hurts. Good for vertical jigging, good for casting and retrieving. But there you go, there you have it. Uh, let me know about the shirts. I've got the shirts up for sale now. You can check it out on my Facebook page, Eric Massey Jig Company. You can also uh, put a post on here about it. Send me a message, let me know. I'm gonna take the orders for a week and then we'll see how it goes and um, I'll let you know. But like, share, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you think. Till next time, we will see you later.